In other words, coal, oil and gas are cheaper. Who knew? But don't tell that to Australian Treasurer Jim Chalmers. Good climate change policy is good economic policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because we understand uh, that the future of this economy will be increasingly powered by cleaner, cheaper, more reliable and increasingly renewable energy. We understand that. And we also understand that for too long in this country, the opportunities of an economy powered by that cleaner and cheaper energy have gone begging. Author Alex Epstein says that most environmental sentiment is based on what he calls the delicate nurturer theory. This is, quote, the assumption that Earth, absent human impact, exists in an optimal, nurturing, delicate balance that is stable, sufficient and safe, as we can hope to expect. You don't need to make too many leaps from there to arrive at the idea that humans are a danger to themselves. And the best way to save humanity is to have as few of them as possible. The politicians who espouse this anti-human rubbish these days barely bother to conceal their disregard for the ordinary people who pay for their stupid ideas. Without doubt, the stupidest idea of recent times was the Snowy 2.0 scheme, dreamed up by former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in 2017. As Energy Executive Ted Woodley said in an opinion piece in The Australian Today, the scheme was meant to cost $2 billion and be finished two years ago. Instead, it's on target to cost $20 billion and unlikely to be completed this year, or this decade, I should say. Its own modelling has found it will force the cost of energy up, not down. Well, that's hardly surprising. The scheme, you see, is designed to use solar power during the day to pump water uphill, then release it into hydro turbines at night when demand for energy increases. The, the potential for something so complex and convoluted to provide cheap energy was always going to be slim. Woodley concluded, quote, Snowy 2.0 never snacked, stacked up economically, technically or environmentally, and its gargantuan cost and environmental impacts cannot be justified for, for providing occasional long duration storage. It will never pay for itself. There are better alternatives. Well, there sure are. Coal, oil and gas spring to mind. So why did Turnbull want, to, want the nation to build it in the first place? Well, it was to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide, or as Epstein would say, avoid upsetting our delicate nurturer. This anti-humanism is mostly confined to people in cities. Earlier, I spoke to Daniel Wild of the Institute of Public Affairs to find out how the green dreams of urban politicians are going down in the bush. 